Right, Metalheads, this is DJ Rem from Metal Devastation Radio, and I have Tony Clark on the line. How you doing, man? Hey, fine. Hot. So, um, so why don't you start by introducing yourself and uh, the rest of the guys in your band? Okay, uh, my name's Tony Clark. Uh, I sing and I play guitar. Um, the guy I got on bass is Emil Abrigada. He is the biggest bassist in the universe. Uh, Sasha Baranski plays drums, and the band's name is Tony Clark and Killing Time because we got together, and I knew from the start that these guys were wasting time with me, so I just thought, uh, make a joke out of it. <laughs> nice. Hey, that works, right? Yeah. Very cool. So how long have you guys all been together doing this? Uh, it's been about three and a half years now since we first started, because I started, I wanted to do it like the old-fashioned way. I didn't want to do a bunch of like computer demos and shit like that. So uh, I just I wrote some songs. I got some guys into a practice, you know, rehearsal studio, and um, got a case of beer. And of course, you know that's cool. But in the end, sometimes it takes a little longer until you get something that you really want to record and, and throw out there. So yeah, it's been a couple of years now. Okay. Right. And what uh, I guess what was the creative spark that got that that made you want to start and do this? We got it all rolling. Creative yeah. spark. Okay, um, that's here's a long one for you. <laughs> nice. Um, I I mean I am just so in love with music. Like I get off on this and that and this and that. And like uh, I actually I studied um, Asian music. Um, I spent a long time in Japan. Uh, I spent a long time in India. And uh, I'm a musician. I mean that's that's what I do. So uh, I went to Florida State and study composition there and I was doing so many things and at some point I just wanted to get back to like you know where I'm from you know like a rock trio a real basic sound drums bass guitar and vocals and uh, to get rid of my songs basically you know to, to, to be able to like sing what I want to sing and uh, that's how it happened nice well you've, you you're well journeyed that's pretty cool yeah 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 so so, do you guys all live in the same area? Are you able to practice right now? Right, right. We're all based in Frankfurt, which okay. is a pretty cool place. It's like 90 degrees right now. We could start growing mangoes here instead of beer or whatever. <laughs> but uh, the, the German beer is fine. Uh, Emil's originally from, uh, I think, Angola or something like that. He's like a big guy. Uh, Sasha is uh, local here, and uh, we all met up, you know, uh, you know, the way you do, like down at the music school. Uh, or, or like a music shop, and hey, uh, you've been playing with this guy. Hey, I don't know you. Who's that? Whatever. So we hooked up, and um, they're perfect. It's a, it's a great band. It's, it's a lot of fun. We're doing some festivals, a lot of outdoor things right now, and it's good weather, and the beer is cold, and it's fine. Very cool. So how did you end up in Germany? Okay, my mom's German, and at some point, like um, after high school, I, I decided, you know, to come here, then I went back there. I lived in L.A. for a while. Um, I lived in Florida, Tallahassee. Um, spent, let's say, my teenage years in Seattle, which is, you know, dreary and uh, good fish, but that's <laughs> it. Right. Um, and I don't know. I, I came over here, and, like, all of a sudden, I'm, like, making music and making a living and, and making money, and I'm like, wow, this is cool. So I decided to stay. That's a good reason. Yeah. You got to make a living, right? Right, right, right. Exactly. Very cool. So, what kind of influences have you had in your life? Did you have growing up, and even to this day, that you know made you want to do this? Um, you mean like musical influences? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or if oh. there's somebody in your family that's musically talented that got you going too, I mean, that's cool. Right, right. I mean, uh, first of all, there was never any question of me doing anything else. I mean, uh, my dad was an opera singer and is an opera director. My, my mom's an actress. Um, my grandmother was a singer. My grandfather was a singer. My aunt is a singer. My stepmom's a singer. <laughs> and it's so, in the like, blood. going back three generations, there's never been anything else. So, um, of course, I started with classical guitar when I was a kid. Um, and then I got into, you know, the usual rock and roll thing. And uh, at some point, I got a little bored with rock and roll, and I started, you know, studying other kinds of music. I went, like... Uh, went all over the world and did this and that and uh and that's it yeah so here i am okay very cool so 
where is a good place for people to find out more about you and the band? What uh, social networking and websites and stuff do you guys use? Yeah, we, we have our own uh, website. That's TonyClarkAndKillingTime.com. And, of course, there's a link to the Facebook page there. Um, it hasn't been a great year until now. We've been basically rehearsing for a couple of big shows. And so there's not a lot of stuff in there, but there's two videos. And I'm posting some dates. We're going to be playing, let's say, starting in about two or three weeks. We're going to be playing a bunch here in Germany. So, uh, yeah, it's Facebook and the website. That's about it. Okay, very good. Is, are there any of those shows you want to plug right now? Uh, is anybody over here? <laughs> it's like, you know, I don't know who's listening to you. It's, um, yeah, uh, there's a very, very big festival going on in Frankfurt called the Museums Ufa Fest. So it's like right on the river where all the museums are. And uh, there's about a million people there. And so we're going to be playing uh, a big stage there, so that's going to be fun. And that's on the 24th of August at 5.30 in the afternoon. So if anybody's in Frankfurt, come on down. And I don't mean Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, right. No, nothing against Kentucky, but... Gotcha. Yeah, well, actually, because what's going to happen is it's going to end up on my YouTube channel, so it, you know, people uh -huh. can listen to it no matter where they're at. So. Cool. Yeah, very good. Great. So... What are your goals for the future? Where do you uh, hope to continue to take all of this? Well, I definitely want to tour outside of Europe. I mean, Europe, Europe's cool. I love living here. Um, there's there's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of uh, there, there's a lot of good things. Um, but I like I like the excitement of going places where I haven't been. So like I I like traveling in Indonesia and in India. I was in I was in Kathmandu the other day and like uh, Matthias Eklund, this Swedish heavy metal guitar god, bumps right into me. And so I I like that. You know I like just touring in freaky places. And it's not so much about the money or like doing big shows. It's just kind of like um, meeting new people and and taking your music there. Right. Well, very cool. I wish you best of luck with that as well. Yeah, thanks. So, with the, um, let's talk about the current the current album. Yeah, okay. uh, it's an EP, unfortunately. It's not like a full-length LP. Okay. EP, but. So where did oh. you guys, uh, sorry, where did you guys record record this at? Well, it was kind of piecemeal. Uh, there's a studio in Mannheim. Uh, a couple of friends of mine do that, and uh, we decided to go there because of the drum sound, because I wanted like a real nice, big, live drum sound, and I didn't want to record in a rinky-dink little studio. So uh, there's a big wall there with stone, and uh, yeah, uh, that's where we record the basic tracks. Then I took that home, and I have my own little recording setup at home, and that's where I did like all the guitar solos and the overdubs. And then I sent out to some guy to do the mixing. Okay, very cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, How long has it been out? Excuse me? How long has the EP been out? Uh, it's been out for about a year and a half. Okay, very cool. Yeah. So what are your plans for, I mean, are you working on, like, an, another one or a full-length album? What's your, what are you working on? Well, to be perfectly honest, I mean, a lot of people, you know, geez, you know, they just, you know, write a song and record it and put it out. And right. It's great, and that's, that's fun. That's great. I'm, I'm happy for people who that, that works for it. But I really want to start, I want to play with a band. I want to play more. I want to be on the road. And when I get the feeling like we could, like, sit down in a studio and play through an entire album in, in a couple of hours and record it, you know, that's the point where I want to be, you know, that's that's what, how I want to do it. So that takes a little time, you know, it really right. takes time because not, not only because of the playing, but also because of the compositions. Like, you write a song, you perform it in front of people, and all of a sudden you figure out, well, it's too slow, uh, or it's too, uh, too low, or uh, whatever, or you want, you don't want the solo there. So I just... Um, I just kind of want to play live more than we have been doing, and then when I feel like it's ready, then we'll go and do an album. Right. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So here's a question specifically for you. If I, if I grabbed your iPod or MP3 player, however you like to listen to music, what, what bands would I find you listening to right now? Um, right now, Earl Greyhound. I like them. They're a pretty cool trio out of Brooklyn. Uh, they were over here like two years ago in Germany touring. That was pretty cool. Um, I still listen to Soundgarden. Soundgarden are great. Uh, Audio Slave, um, Pearl Jam. Um, I went to see uh, uh, Alter Bridge the other day. Uh, so yeah, that's 
that's just about my, my corner. Okay, very good. And then, what would you say, you know, with with the festivals coming up, you're going to be playing and everything, you know, what would you say has set you guys apart? What are people going to get from a live show when they come see you guys? Uh, I think we definitely, we take it up and down more than other people. Uh, it's very, very dynamic. Like, we have a lot of fast, silly songs. You know, I write some lyrics that really don't make any sense, not, not even to me. And then we have, like, the severely moody, slow, weird stuff. Uh, so it's definitely like uh, it's a roller coaster ride. It's it's not it's not party music. <laughs> it's loud and it's fast and it's fun and then it gets really weird. Nothing wrong with weird music, man. Right, right. right. I mean, I I got off like on the last Tool gig that I saw. You know, that was like if if uh, if I were to let's say categorize concerts, I would rather go to a Tool show than to. Well, let's say ACDC. I mean, I, I love going to ACDC shows, but I like concerts that take you up and down a bit. Right, right. So, speaking of live shows, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened? You had a live show that you have done. Uh oh, wow, man! I was in I was in South Africa, uh, playing in a stadium with a, a show. It was it was like a big thing, multimedia, lasers and fire and bombs going off. And uh, that was just so freaky because I had, like, my in-ear system and the Marshall stack, like, blowing, blowing right next to me. And all of a sudden, I couldn't hear anything. And so, you know, I just forgot the entire, like, the choreography. I forgot what everybody was doing. I forgot the song. I forgot what I was supposed to sing. And I just started, like, improvising because it was the only thing that I could do because I couldn't hear anything else. So uh, that was um, scary. Hey, but the show went on, right? Yeah, the show went on, and it was like all over the web, and a bunch of people watching. It was cool. Very good. So, I always I always throw out a, a, a crazy wild question in my interviews. So here, uh -huh. here's your crazy wild question. Yeah. Out of you, between you and the guys in the band, who uh, who spends the most time in front of a mirror before you guys go on stage? Um, Sasha. Definitely, because he's, he's the youngest, he's got all the tattoos, and he works out, he's like a fitness fanatic, and and he's also, he's constantly busting himself up, he's like, he, last gig we had, like a couple of days before the gig, he broke his fist because he smashed somebody's nose. Oh, jeez. So yeah, he's kind of a self-conscious guy, he'll, he'll get out of it, he's like 22 or something. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All okay. right. Is there anything else you would like to say about anything I haven't asked you that you want to make sure people that listen to this interview know about you and the band? Um. Yeah. I mean, uh, I write songs. That's like my main purpose. You know. I mean, you can go out there. You can listen to bands that groove. You can listen to bands that have a great guitar sound or whatever. But I really take it from the song perspective. I write about things that I care about. Like, uh, let's say, I Am the Dirt is about violence and this problem that we have that, you know, people just don't stand up to, to that in public. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so many things out there that I want to write about, that I want to talk to people about. And um, that's it. That's why I make music. What's the writing process like for you? Tedious. I'll, I'll have to say because I'm, I play guitar a lot. I sit down. I love like jamming, like you know, practicing scales, you know, developing things on the guitar. That's great. But in the end, I just I put all those musical things on hold until I have like a lyrical idea, you know, until there's something that I want to say in a song, and until I have that hook, like those couple of words and a little bit of melody, I don't really start writing the song. And so I have, like, this entire backlog, you know, like terabytes full of stuff, um, but it really doesn't come together until the last moment. And so uh, I got a lot of stuff in my brain. Gotcha. So when you were talking about, you know, for the, for, for the next EP or album, however you go about that, and so do you kind of like try to understand kind of what you were saying. So you like to actually get the songs out there live to see what you need to tweak on them? Is that kind of what you were? Right, right, right. I mean, we improvise a lot. You know, we, we have a song, but we, we jam a lot. We do intros, we do solos, we do this and that and that. 
And then at some point you figure out that, well, you know, it's not going down too well. You know, we should change this, we should change that. And I, I kind of, I stick to my idea in terms of like the, you know, the emotion, uh, the meaning of the song, the lyrics. But if the, the bass and the drums and the, let's say the whole arrangement isn't really perfectly fitting that, then, you know, we'll change that before we record it. And that was like when I'm in my car. There's this really psychedelic kind of thing about, you know, you get in your car and you have this purpose in life, you've got to get somewhere. And we were playing it way too fast. It simply didn't get the message across. And uh, in the end, I ended up slowing it down to like 60 beats per minute, which is like incredibly slow. It's like, <gasps> oh my God, you know? Right. And uh, so everybody had a real tough time playing, playing the song at that speed. But uh, in the end, I think that's, that's the way it's got to be. Yeah, because I just I find this kind of intriguing because it seems like most bands, or at least most I talk to, you know, they put they write an album, they record it, and then they go play it live mm -hmm. without knowing how it's going to sound live. Right. right, right. So that's kind of a I always wondered about that. So I, your approach is kind of I kind of think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, being a musician, I I do it for a living, so I I work on other people's albums, and you know, I got uh, a couple of years of experience doing stuff like that. And the thing is, it's it's all about what you want to do. You know, if you're like, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to name any names now, but, you know, there's some musicians that, you know, they have this vision of a beautiful sound. And these days you can just, you, you can go into a studio, you can do that, you can get somebody else to play a part, you can quantize it, you can edit it until it's dead. But in the end, I want to get on stage and I want to play. That's what I'm about. You know? Right. I want to I want to work up a sweat and I want to have some beer and you know the whole rock and roll thing. So you know that's that's not the let's say the vehicle that is the point. That's the end. So if I want to if I want to be playing shows, I want to record stuff the way we play it, right? Yep, definitely sounds yeah. like a good plan. So, yeah. So speaking of beer, what's your favorite? Uh, right now, I was in I was in Belgium the other day. Um, in Antwerpen, and there's a place right across from the church called uh, 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 the El Segobo, the Eleventh Commandment, and uh, they have a beer called the Triple Carmelite, and it is just, it's heavenly. Uh, the place is really freaky, too. It looks like a church. There's, like, all these icons and, and things on the wall. It's like a medieval building, and you go in there, and you have this beer, and it's just fantastic. <laughs> nice. Did you say Antwerpen? Yeah, Antwerpen, right. Well, and the reason that caught my eye is because, you know, I'm over here in Michigan in the States, and the uh, the township I live in is Antwerp Township. Cool. Yeah, there's so. probably a bunch of buildings over there. So it just yeah. kind of, that, that caught my ear when you said that. Yeah, Antwerpen's a cool, cool city. So, great. Oh, anything else? Anything else? Um, hope to make it to the States and play there sometime. Yeah, yeah, that, that, would, that would be awesome. Play. If you make it to Michigan, make sure you hit me up. I will come see you play. Cool. So, okay, well, I want to give you big, huge thanks again for uh, taking time to call and do the interview. I also, before I forget, uh, I want to give Dave Tedder a big, huge uh, shout-out because that guy rocks. He always sends me yeah, killer Dave's bands. Cool. So thank you, Dave, for hooking me up. And, uh, yeah, just big thanks, and please tell the guys in the band I said hello, and I, you know, I hope to hear more from you soon. Right, okay. Thank right. you. Yeah, Have a take, good day. Take care, man. Bye. Bye.
Andover.